The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Uh, hello? Hello? Anyone here? Why am I in some black void? Where is here? I don't understand. What do you want from me? A Crypt TV link? You you want me to review this or something? Great, dead silence. Thanks. That's really getting this arc in motion. Well, Wolfpack, your doofy internet kitty catastrophe is lost in the great beyond, with no sign of aid. But that won't stop my Halloween hijinks. <laughs> It's the spookiest season of the year again, so let's kick off these grim times with a look at a new scary short from horror show Crypt TV! So, our webisode opens up with an artist girl drawing her new project all alone at night in her beautiful mansion. Oh, it's the relatability of these characters which get me. But one evening, she gets an eerie visitor. I like how the scene instantly raises creepy as the night visitor grows more aggressive knocking at the door, establishing a sort of stranger's vibe for this short. Always high suspense when watching alone. The girl grabs a weepin and rather stupidly avoids first looking through her peephole before answering the door. You're a freaking genius, you idiot! Yet she finds nobody there. A brief, if unsettling start to display how isolated the main character and her home is. In the woods, nobody can hear you scream. Except for the neighbor homes right there. Oh! This is a plot which likes to toy around with the fear of a home invasion, but adds a kooky twist later to grant it an identity to call its own. While scouting her porch, she does find a note. Yeah, but turn it over! There's a letter! You're right. She races off to check her locks, but sees nothing. Well, nothing but a jump scare. After fumbling around like Curly Howard for a few seconds, she realizes that the intruder isn't doing anything, as if he were a dummy. Old man mannequin, but why? Spanish doubloons worth hundreds of dollars are sitting at the bottom of the lake. Yeah, in a pretty crazy twist, we quickly learn the villain's M.O. Apparently this secret cryptid likes to toy with his or her victims by leaving a dummy of part two Jason Voorhees to jump scare the targets and somehow throw them off by leaving a harmless decoy, which does nada. You know what would have been scarier than nothing? What? Anything! The short adds a small amount of psychological horror to its killer by having him mislead and use dummies to trick folks into thinking they're endangered, but they aren't, and he backs off for a short time to make them feel safe again. I guess so they don't see him coming for reals. His tactic is a total bait and switch, meant to gaslight targets and fool the audience, but to be fair, the dummy and implied real design of the Crypt Killer is kind of sweet. I dig how he resembles Part 2 Jason and a mix of the strangers, giving him this almost sketchy scarecrow appearance. The short modeled him off a of prowler, adding to the home invasion feel of the horror. It's a very striking image that makes the monster look super unnerving, even when standing totally still. He's just standing there. Menacingly! The idea is certainly unique, but alas, it doesn't save this story from getting dumb. Artist Girl tosses out the sack and calls her boyfriend, where she makes nothing of any of this. Why haven't you called the police? 
And tell them what? Somebody broke in and left a mannequin behind me. Yes. Yes, you idiot! No freaking joke, the girl does not ever bother calling the cops, getting friends, or even makes sure she's alone in her house after all this. She just goes back to living her normal life as if she didn't get her home broken into and simply assumes it was just a prank, bro. That's... very unlikely. I'm not even kidding. This is so stupid. While I do legit admire the frightening isolated atmosphere, decent suspense, and even the killer's bizarre style, this short film is absolutely crippled by blatant idiot moments in a horror story BS. The plot entirely hinges on the artist girl stupidly doing nothing to save herself or look any further into a weirdo breaking into her house in order for the story to play out. And it only hurts the plot by making her look like a complete dumbass. She doesn't call the cops or any aid over on her home being invaded, somebody who had to have been watching her in order to leave that dummy behind her, or on the fact that somebody did sneak into her house, and as far as we know, might still be in the house with her. This lady is so dumb, she deserves to die. It's plain bad writing at its finest. This is made more painful because she never even explores her own mansion to confirm if she's all alone again, or if the prankster might still be hiding inside to get her again. She just gets drunk on wine and writes the whole thing off like she's safe. It's a death wish. You might as well just come out here to investigate a strange noise or something. This scene is brief, but it can't be ignored. It makes the writing worse because our main protagonist is a moron who does what nobody would ever do if they were in this sitch. I said it before, but I'll say it again. Crypt TV can so easily write ways around this, but when they don't, it makes you, the viewer, infuriated that they have to make the human characters dolts. To be fair, she checks to see if the dummy's still dead. Yep. Surely it won't happen again. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. So, like most women who suffer a home intrusion and paranoid something dangerous could be anywhere, she strips naked and has a long ass shower. <laughs> 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 Don't all you ladies just relate so much to Artist Girl? Oh no, somebody easily sneaked into my house, caught me off guard, and could possibly still be inside with me. Better get naked and easily cornered. About as brilliant as Carl. Man, feel good out here. Might just, uh, get nude. <laughs> Shine some sun where the sun don't shine, you know what I mean? My eyes! My eyes! Like I said, painful stupidity. Though we honestly get a really cool montage of her empty mansion, showing us nothing which we can notice amiss, adding some ominous suspense. It's pretty dang nifty, like a Halloween movie. As you know, there's something here, but you're anticipating it. However, it still doesn't make Artist Girl any less stupid, because, surprise, she learns there's still trouble. It's almost as if showering in an unlocked bathroom before knowing you're safe was a brain-dead idea. Okay, so in spite of how rock-stupid the main girl is, I can safely say that the jump scares are definitely not lazy or poor. The short actually does leave clues and hints that the cryptid is there in the background, making re-watching this a lot cooler. Like when the girl is checking out her backyard 
card, as she's scouring around, in her second close-up, we see the silhouette of the dummy's hand, now next to her, when it wasn't there earlier. While she's talking to her boyfriend, you notice a slightly ajar door behind her, which she never closes or pays mind to. And just seconds before her second date, we see the bathroom door isn't fully closed. These are all small details which cleverly suggest the cryptid has been there hidden in the back all along, shifting events and watching her up close. Almost in a similar vein as Billy or The Strangers. The short teases a greater horror that the killer is always a few steps ahead of his victim and toying with her like a predator. <laughs> I actually do enjoy nice deets like those, since it does add a spookier dread over a killer who, as far as we know, might be a normal human psycho performing all this. It's quite disturbing the lengths the still man goes to win. Tragically, I still wish our main character wasn't a colossal Dorkasaurus. After being cornered by her own idiocy, she then takes her slow, sweet-ass time getting covered while freaking out, and thinks it's another dummy prank, bro. She's so dumb that she actually pauses to look at the still man to clarify if it's the dummy again or an actual guy. Yes, for reals, she stops to look and see if the killer is a real killer in her shower. You're a freaking genius! Yes, you idiot! She circles around where we admittedly get a nice twist ending. Fool you! Yeppers, the prowler in her bathroom, was the real killer all along, standing perfectly still to dupe her again while his NPC stood guard outside to double team her. I guess even a psycho man couldn't resist getting some T and A shots. Giggity, 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 giggity. The twist is the best part of the whole story, as it reveals there is an actual killer the whole time, and he was using his trick shadow clones to confuse and mind screw his prey so they don't see when their real death comes, striking when the time is right. But since he apparently doesn't slay the girl quickly and waited for so long to do this, it adds a dark theory that he either kills the girl or rapes her. What the shell? Yeah, he does toy with her for so long, personally broke into her private time, and the noises at the end don't paint a pretty picture, leaving things on a grim note for us to imagine her horrific fate. <laughs> Save the meats just right. Regardless, that's the end of the Crypt TV Frightmare, still. A pretty okay horror model, but lacking some sharper fashion. There's clearly a lot of great horror tricks here, and very intriguing potential for the still man, but tragically, it is held back by falling into some of the traps of bad horror writing. The main protagonist is too dumb to live, going from a person you can't can feel for being isolated with a vague tension lurking around her into a massively dim-witted moron who does everything wrong a character could in cheap horror schlock. She's just so stupid, and the fact that Crypt TV usually has tighter writing and often avoids the negatives of horror only made it hurt more when the staff plow right into it. The artist girl just had the scare of her life by a home intruder pranking her, and knows somebody was watching her to pull this stunt, and what does she do? Gets naked and chills in the shower of her unsafe home and hopes it doesn't happen again. <laughs> It's just so bad it's painful, and almost makes it seem like she wants to die as she doesn't even bother snooping around her own house to make sure she's safely alone. My horror family knows that we usually detest idiot characters in horror tales because it excuses contrived writing and cheap scares. And sadly, this is no exception. It's just lazy and aggravating. Luckily, this short still holds some value, 
thanks to the Stillman. I genuinely like this cryptid, as he slash she is blatantly the more interesting character. The killer has a very wicked design, is granted some lairs as a baddie, as he's not just killing people, but likes to play mind games with the victims, and goes to such extremes to traumatize them before sniping them out, and is very imposing in the short glimpses we catch him. I think his decoy tactic is reminiscent of Weeping Angels, you know, a very foreboding living statue or art that changes or closes in on you when you briefly look away from it. The dummy nearly has that type of effect, as it's moved around to jump the targets and creepily feels lifelike itself whenever the actual guy shifts it around in poses somewhere in the dark. The short also indulges in super effective paranoia fuel, with the Stillman hidden somewhere in the area. Like all the clues of his presence, such as the open doors and how he or his mannequin constantly shift. If this tale had more of those small clues and tiny details, then I'd say this would almost reach golden status. The cryptid is indeed the best element, and I do think this guy could hold a movie on his own like the Birch. Maybe even dive deeper into his character, like why he does this, who he is, or heck, maybe even give him a dummy army to kick up a grander scheme. Some fans actually theorize the girl's boyfriend might be linked to the the killer too, since he knew what his lady was exactly doing by the time she called, and said he'd see her soon, only to never pop up in the rest of the episode, making a few believe he could be the Stillman. There's so many crazy directions the Stillman can go in, and I do think he's decent enough to make the short enjoyable. Alas, it's not enough. Overall, the short does feel like cheap dollar store horror, thanks to relying on idiot moments to too many jump scares that you can see coming at times, and some major contrivances here and there. It comes so close to being this retro slasher love letter with so much joy for horror, but sadly it overdoses on the bad side of horror as well. So, I grant this model a silver skull. It has an equal amount of good and bad elements, but it equates to an alright spooky fable over an epic one. I wanted to love this so bad, but the buffoon we follow is so dumb I didn't care if she lived or died by the end. I will legit recommend it, since the Stillman is such a fascinating monster, but will warn you that it's just bootleg strangers and tourist trap. Still definitely does showcase some decent potential as a solid nightmare, but the weak writing and sheer foolishness reveals that it still has a long way to go. I'm your ghostly host, Catastrophe, and Terror Time has only just begun. <laughs> Nabbit, usually when I finish a review, the status quo sets back to normal. Alright, whoever or whatever you are, what's the gag? You don't need to play the Stillman game with me, I'm already trapped and at your mercy. There's nothing I can do to foil you or escape, and I know someone's a dungeon master. So, what game are we playing? Oh my poor, poor catastrophe. When we're done with my game, you're going to wish you stayed in pause mode. <gasps> Thundercatter, you're behind this? You're damn straight, bitch. But tell you what, since you figured me out, you deserve some facts, Jack. Like a child learning its first steps, I feel I should reward you. How's about a change of scenery? What the? You put me in a holodeck of the Resident Evil Mansion? Thought you'd love it, horror kit. Your love for scary stories shall be your ultimate tomb. <laughs> 
You catnapped me. You hijacked my show and trapped me in the dark room to play some sick, twisted game? But why? 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 You hear that, scaredy cat? He wants to know why! You ruined my life! I barely even know you. You're like a C-list character on the channel. We've had so few crossovers, and I don't even know what I did to you. And that makes it worse. I was the head honcho around here until you arrived on our doorstep. But now I'm taking back my rightful place. You're useless dead weight who should be trashed, not treated as my equal. You've held this council back, bogged us down with pointless distractions, wasted precious resources, my resources, and made me cater to you for the last time. But now it's my turn. And I want to have some fun with you by playing a little game. I think you just made a thousand new slash fix. Ugh, does every word out of your mouth have to be a stupid quip? Well, I am an entertainer. Then you should enjoy being a part of my act. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of the council playing waiting games. And I'm sick of being ignored. You are my enemy. You've always been my enemy. And this is our battle royale. So, since I promised Pinky we perform some tests to see what you're made of, I'm going to give you a world of hell. I hate you and your stupid channel, so I'm going to torment you with nothing but awful, mediocre, excruciating crap for you to watch until the day you die. You're sealed in my puzzle maze, where you get to find and review bad material. Will is finding a way out. If you can, you're my new toy, and I plan to to game with your life in my own level until you crack. This game was designed especially for you to keep you lost in a dark world, alone, without any food or friends, trekking along a never-ending labyrinth while the only new content burns you out until you can take no more. I must watch you go insane as I have putting up with you for all these eons. You're forcing me to do negative reviews? And warping your mind in my playhouse. Before I end you, I need to watch you suffer. It'll be a privilege, not only observing your slow descent into madness, but you turning away from your once beloved shows and driving away your loyal audience with awful fables. I can't believe you'd do this. Believe it. Unlike the others, I'm not weak. I shall be the feline who broke Catastrophe. Pfft, you break me? I've done this song and dance before, and unlike last time, I actually have friends on board our ship who just need to notice my absence and unplug your console. Only a matter of time. So bring it, Iron Fart. Oh, you better believe I will. Don't forget, kitten, Halloween's approaching. Your biggest era of terror and fanfare. So let's see how fun you'll be when you and the fans endure a long line of fail bombs from your favorite scare shows. You will see how bile your classics truly are. <sighs> If that's what I face, then I will fight my fears. I'm not afraid of you, Decepticat. I've seen ugly. It won't crack me. And when this is over, you're going to be struck by my thunderstorm. We shall see. Keep the outfit, Cat, because you'll soon be a real ghost. Let the games begin. <laughs>